got a call from one of our members yesterday uh, and they said, Mark, what do we do? We've got someone who brought in an emotional support animal, a dog. Uh, the dog's running free, it's not leashed, and uh, it's running around the office. In fact, it was in the room, it was whining, it was crying. What do we do? Because we don't want to fall out of compliance with the Americans for Disabilities Act. Well, of course, we have, we've written a number of articles about the ADA and the Americans for Disabilities Act, and, and, uh, um, and, and we want to make sure that our doctors are in full compliance with this, uh, uh, with this law. We want to make sure that you accommodate appropriately uh, those individuals with uh, disabilities and, and, that, uh, and that we service them well. And so the question is, what do we do with emotional support animals? Well, first of all, let's, let's back up a little bit and let's talk about the ADA. Let's talk about what a service animal is according to the ADA. The first is this, it's a dog or it's a miniature horse um, and the animal has to be specifically individually trained, does not have to be professionally trained. So uh, the person could actually train the dog themselves. However, it must be trained uh, to perform specific actions and tasks that are related to the person's disability. And by the way, that disability, it could include a psychological condition as well. So they could be psychological service dogs as well. Now, again, it, 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 most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, we're talking about a dog. So if it's an animal other than a dog or a miniature horse, then it falls fully outside of uh, the purview of the ADA. In fact, I heard uh, recently that an airline, uh, somebody tried to take a peacock or something like that on the airline and, and claimed that it was uh, a service animal of course, they did not have to allow them because it doesn't fall into the narrow definition from the uh, ADA. So, what does that mean then if it could be a psychological support animal? Uh, how does that uh, fit for emotional, uh, uh, emotional support animals? Well, the answer is the Department of Justice has, has, has indicated very specifically that emotional support animals don't meet the criteria uh, that is set forth in the, uh, in the ADA. They are they are not trained to perform specific tasks related to the person's disability. And, and as such, they say that emotional support animals are not service animals. So that's really important. But then the question is, okay, well, Mark, how do I know? How do, how do we determine if the animal is a service animal or if it is an emotional support animal or if it's just simply a pet? And, and the answer is you can ask two questions because there's a lot of questions you can't ask you can ask two questions. First is, you can ask, is the dog required for your disability? And the second question you can ask is, what task or work has the dog been trained to perform? Um, now, you cannot ask what the person's disability is. Uh, you also cannot ask for paperwork. And that's, that's one that's easily misconstrued as well, because you think, well, surely they have paperwork. Well, you can't ask for the paperwork either, according to the ADA and the Department of Justice. Neither one of those things is allowed. Um, and so, but you can ask the other two questions. If they, if they don't know the answer to what the dog has been specifically trained in related to their disability, and they can't ask, you know, uh, you know, is it required for the disability? If they can't answer those questions, then uh, it's no longer a service animal. It doesn't meet the ADA's definition. So, um, by the way, there, the other thing is, is one thing she mentioned is uh, that the patient who came in with the dog that was running around the office had a certificate from online um, that she had done, or, or she had a certificate that indicated that this was an emotional support animal. The Department of Justice has specifically indicated, and so has the ADA, that, um, that those certificates are invalid. Again, you can't even ask for the certificate, so the production of it really doesn't matter. It doesn't fit it. Uh, just those two questions are, are it. Now, what can you do if you've got a dog um, and you, you haven't been able to really determine if it's a service animal or maybe you even has, when, when is it appropriate to ask the dog to be removed? Well, first of all, you can ask the dog to be removed if it is obviously an emotional support animal and not a service animal. So if they can't answer uh, the first questions that we talked about, that, that's obviously one of those cases where you can ask the dog to be removed. When else? One, if the dog is out of control, uh, if, it is not, if it is not housebroken, uh, and if it opposes a danger to other patients. Those are three easy, quick qualifiers as to when you can ask a dog to be removed. The last one is one that won't happen that often, but occasionally might if you really serve a very select population. That is, if it would fundamentally offer the specific service or if alter the specific services that you offer 
in your practice. Um, and again, most likely that's not applicable. Now that would be, for example, if you've got an entire dorm floor uh, at a college that is reserved for those who have uh, dog allergies or, or something to that effect, um, and, and somebody wanted to have that floor that had a service animal, in that case it would be fundamentally uh, altering. Now if you had a, a practice where you really serviced a clientele that had uh, uh, animal allergies, dog allergies if you will, um, then at that stage then if it would fundamentally alter your practice. Now I'm not saying if you have patients that have those allergies because at those cases then you have to find a way to alter your scheduling to make it work but if your practice centers around that kind of a practice um, then you could uh, uh, you could refuse the dog as well. Those are going to be very 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 few and far between. So uh, that's the easiest way to know the difference between a service animal and a emotional support animal. You have to accommodate service animals according to the ADA and the Department of Justice and not emotional support animals. Hopefully this helps you out and we're going to cover more of the ADA in coming weeks. We'll catch you next week.